I got a bunch of comic book goodies, and I want to share them with my best friends in the whole wide world. And that's you, the comic book community. I'll be right back. What's good, everybody? I know I already dropped a video for Tuesday, um, but I don't know. I just wanted to do another one. Hopefully, you guys don't mind hanging out with me as I got some more uh, comic book goodies in the mail that I just thought, you know, I might open them up with the community. Uh, we got some packages. You know, these came pretty well. They're not all banged up. You know, so I thought we might open these together. We got some things from Unknown Comic. We got some goodies from uh, Comic Elite, from Drew and Sean and Kyle over there. So I thought, you know, you guys might not mind just opening them up together. You know, I'm just getting off work. Thought I'd just take a little time to decompress. So... Here we are. I hope you guys don't mind. All right. Here they are. Got them. All right. So let's see what we got. Okay. Hit this spot right here. With all the luck that I've been having with packages, man, I'm just happy that these are okay. And I'm going to go ahead and open them up and get ready for the next haul that's coming in. look like they're okay right yeah okay set that right there let's see what we got right. nice neatly done let's see what we got from unknown that there let me just pop these couple of rivets here all right and i definitely want to make sure always remove the tape out of the way ladies and gentlemen i know sometimes we get caught up in what we're doing but definitely make sure that you're taking the time to remove that tape because if that ever catches your comic book Oh boy, you are not going to like it. And I've had that happen to me a few times, but I've learned my lesson. All right? And I'd rather it not happen again. So it takes only a couple extra seconds to remove the tape. All right? Okay. All right, so everybody knows that DC's uh, Unknown Comics, their shipments come probably like two weeks after uh, you order them, after that, that comic book release date. So everything comes about two weeks after the fact. I don't know why that is, but I'm happy I received my comics. And I will show you what I ordered. I ordered another copy of uh miles morales spider-man issue number 33 the villain's reign variant with that new spider-man with that spider-man costume up there see if you can see that all right there we go i gotta get that glare out of there yep so i ordered another copy of those one of those because like i said all things miles morales I'll be picking them up because you'll never you never know what's going to go on, right? And then I also grabbed uh, from DC versus Vampires issue number two. I grabbed that foil Virgin variant cover, and look at that. 
And she is a beauty. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. She's nice. She's very nice. Look at that. I love it. Definitely. Yes, I wanted this one for my um for my art collection. It's just a beautiful cover. Man, you can't go wrong with that, huh? That's a beauty. Green Lantern. Looking like he's been vampirized. Vampirized. <laughs> vampirized. Yes. That's nice. Yep. So that's what came in that package. Let's uh let's pop open another one. Let's see. We have Let's see what we got from Comic Elite. Shout out to Sean, Drew, and Kyle over there. Big ups. Appreciate you guys. If you guys ever check them out, they do a real funny uh, comic. Uh, what is it? They're Mez and Skippets. They're funny. So from time to time, I tune in and check them out. I enjoy them, so just check them out. So let's see what we got here. I can always count on theirs to come. Yeah. I know for a fact Sean don't play no games when it come to packaging. <laughs> right, Big Sean? I know Big Sean don't play no games when it come to packaging. <laughs> Word the mother. Put that over there. So, let's see what we got. They got that. I like that nice foam wrap that they put around there. It's a little different than that bubble wrap. It's a little cleaner. The foam wrap is pretty cool. I think I'll keep that. Thanks, guys. We'll give it to one of our, uh, our community comic book winners. Set that right there. Right? And they use the painter's tape because it's easier to get it off. It's easier to release. Oh, yes, I remember what this was. Yeah, for sure. I definitely remember this. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is Comic Elite's exclusive... Crimson Rain, issue number one, Darth Vader variant, with the two first appearances in the eyes. I don't know if you can see them there. Let's see if we can get a close-up. But look at this, man. This thing is a beauty, man. This is nice. Look at the detail in there. Holy smokes. So Vader's helmet. ha. <laughs> Yo, look at that, man. That's dope. That is super dope right there. Fresh to death, like a million bucks. This is fire. I like that. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Drew. Thanks, Kyle. This is dope. Fire. Exclusive. That's nice, huh? Wow. I like that. All my Star Wars fans, huh? Tell me that's not a nice one. Definitely worth having in the collection. And Crimson Rain is dope. It started off real good. It's off to a good start. It looked like it's going to be a good read. There was a bunch of uh, first appearances in there. There's some, you know, some people that we've known from before, but they had some new appearances in there. And listen, man. Now, for nothing, keep your eye out with the way everything's going with these streaming services. Uh, I know you guys saw the new Mandalorian joint, right? The, um, the Boba Fett joint. Yeah. I know you guys saw the Boba Fett. That was nice. So, I'm excited about that. And ain't no telling where we going from here, man. But I'm around for it. Yeah. One more time. 
Can't go wrong with that. That's nice, man. It's the beauty. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Nice. Okay, cool. Not bad. So far, so good. I appreciate everybody just hanging out with me, man. Yeah, like I said, I ain't got nothing to do. So, just thought I'd pop open a couple boxes, man. Let's do another one. This one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Let's do this one. This one is coming from friend of the channels. This is Brian Hawkins, one of the co-creators of Black Cotton from Scout Comics. And I purchased um, an exclusive variant a while back. And he told me that, you know, if I sent it to him, he would sign it for me. So let's check it out, guys. <laughs> yes. And thank you very much, Brian. Um, I appreciate everything that you've done. I appreciate, first and foremost, bro, I appreciate that story, man. Like, I genuinely enjoyed Black Cotton. And I can't wait until Volume 2 comes out, man. So I'm excited about that. I am so excited about that. And this thing had me on the edge of my seat just waiting for the next issue. Every issue, I was waiting for the next issue to come out. Yeah, let me just take her out ever so gently. All right. We got her back, safe and sound. Just want to grab, get her out of the box. And I'm telling you guys, if you haven't, if you haven't read Black Cotton, um, look for it. Give it a read. There are there are still some 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 copies floating around out there. Um, it was a really good read, man. It was a different perspective on um on all the shootings that was happening in the black community. It's a different take on it, but they were real tasteful about it. You know what I mean? They weren't like trying to cram anything down anybody's throat. They weren't like pointing the fingers or trying to make anyone feel bad. They were just trying to bring a different perspective and just bring awareness to what's going on. And I think they did that in such a tasteful way. Um, so big ups and shout out to the guys over there, uh, Patrick Foreman, Brian Hawkins, and the rest of the team. You guys did a great job with that. All right. So let me just take the plastic off. I want to handle it with care because I don't want to damage it either. All right. I just want to oh, she's a beauty. She is such a beauty. <laughs> Yo, this thing is so beautiful, man. All right, guys. I'll show you. And this is... Scout Comics, Black Cotton, issue number two, right? This is a Hive exclusive. It's a Neil Nelson virgin variant signed by none other than Brian Hawkins himself. Look at that. Look at that, huh? Now, how awesome is that? This is why I love our hobby, man. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm shaking just holding this thing in my hand. I, You know, yo, I am so excited to add this to my collection. As a matter of fact, I don't even think I'm going to put this away. I think I might actually get a frame or something. I might send this in to get it CGC. I don't know. I mean, it might get the, the what is it? It might get the, what, what, what label will it get? I got to do my CGC homework. It might get the purple label or I don't know, whatever. But I must. I think I'm going to send this in. I could send it to CBCS. And they could do the verification on it. Yeah. They could do the label verification on it. But this is such a beautiful book, man. Wow. Wow. I 
like it. I like that. That is so nice. Black Cotton, issue number two. Neil Nelson, exclusive, Hive exclusive, Virgin variant. Such a beautiful book. Beautiful cover, beautiful book. Wow. Believe it, man. Wow. And this was advertised as like a metal variant. So, and I never actually took it out of the cover. I didn't want to touch it. It's all white and everything. So I never touched the thing. <laughs> I was too scared, man. So, man, that's fire, bro. Thank you very much. Brian. Peace, love, respect to you, man. Always. Always. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you. Wow. Nice. Nice. All right. What else do we got here? This one. This one coming from Jonathan Kuznicki. Jonathan Kiznicki. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. What did I order from you, Mr. Kiznicki? Knowing me, ain't no telling. <laughs> ain't no telling knowing me. But here she is. Nice and secure. Well, he even got the flaps hanging out the end. <laughs> you can tell he's done this before. <laughs> he put that right up in there. Me, I would have been like, nah, that don't fit. Bag's too big. That doesn't fit. <laughs> oh, man. I'm happy, though. Nonetheless, I got to say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy, man. I'm happy. Had a good day, good, hard, challenging day at work. I could respect the challenge. Life without a challenge is pretty boring. So, and I'm happy I'm able to share these intimate moments with you guys. Oh, this is an easy one. Okay. I'll show you what it is. Oh, it's simple. Yeah. All right. So what did I do? I doubled back. Let's see. Let me just open it up real quick. Yeah. Got it. Got it, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Okay. So, this is real easy. Easy peasy. What I grabbed was I doubled back. I waited for this. And this just goes to tell you, show you guys, ladies and gentlemen. Like, I know, you know, a lot of times comic books come out and they immediately take off, right? It was the moment they hit the market. Sometimes you buy them off the shelf and they're like triple... Uh, double or triple cover price, right? And, and a lot of us kind of, we, we may shy away from it for a time and it continues to go up. But if you're patient enough, trust me, believe what I tell you, if you're patient enough, nine times out of 10, that comic is going to come down a little bit. So you don't always have to buy uh, the comic just because it's hot. Like you could wait for it to cool off and double back and grab it and grab it. And that's what I did with this book. I wanted this book so desperately but because I knew everybody was going to buy it and there was a whole bunch of copies sold, I decided to just wait. I, I knew eventually that I would be able to get my hands on it, as I do with a lot of comics. You see a lot of variants around me. You see a lot of hot, expensive variances that I have on my shelves and everything. But I'm, I'm waiting. And I don't have a problem with wheeling, dealing with, with, with dealers. You know what I mean? So I'll go, in, I'll go into their um, cinema, cinema message or... I'll go into the shops and I'll, you know, I'll pull out a stack of money and I'll be like, listen, 
you know, you got this. I'm willing to offer you this for it. And nine times out of ten, a lot of people are they're, they're, they're pretty cool about it. Like, you know, they'll cut you a deal because, you know, they want to sell the book and they want to see somebody buy the book. So that's what I do. You know what I mean? So I'm not just spending money just to be spending money. I do wait. I do try to get the deal. I do try to like um, buy for a low, low, low price. Now, if there's a book that I, that I, I desperately want and I know it's going to be because there's a strong possibility that you could wait too long and the price keeps going up. So you just have to be very strategic about what you're doing. You have to pay attention and you have to be knowledgeable about what the market is looking like. You know what I mean? You have to pay attention to what's trending, what's going up, what's going down, what may level out, you know, and just be patient. But, it, you know, sometimes if you just feel like you have to have the book and you think it's going to go up, it might be that perfect opportunity to buy because you may purchase a book for $50, but in the next month or so, that $50 book is worth 200 and something dollars. You know what I mean? So... I would rather get the book at 50 than have to pay the 200 for it, right? And a lot of times that's what, you know, that that's just good business. You know what I mean? So anyway, enough of me rambling on and on about stuff I know nothing about. <laughs> um, but I had to double back and I grabbed Daredevil, issue number 25, uh, first cover appearance of Electra as Daredevil. And this is... That virgin copy. You know, and I know it's nothing spectacular, but it's something that I wanted in my collection, but I just didn't want to pay the crazy prices that everybody was asking for when the book was super hot. So I just decided to wait. And I got it for a really, really great price. And I'm happy. I'm happy about that. I may actually even get another one. Yeah. Because prices have calm calm down considerably it's a beautiful piece of artwork um i think that you know it's just great to see electra in this daredevil costume man i you know i think it's a heck of an event so yeah i had to have it i grabbed it you know so electra ladies and gentlemen as daredevil daredevil's locked up <laughs> he was locked up. This is Chip Sadarsky work right here. So you guys make sure you check this run out, man. Chip Sadarsky, he killed that run, man. He killed that run. And just like how I said with Thor, like I may not mention it all the time, but there are a lot of comics that I'm reading that I sometimes I just don't say anything about. Like I got Daredevil all around me too. Like I could I could pull Daredevil like it ain't nothing. It's, he's here. Like here's Daredevil. Daredevil's here. That Chip Sadarsky run is right here, ladies and gentlemen. So don't sleep on your boy. I'm in, I'm around. I'm around. Shout out to my boy uh Rod. You know what I mean? Rod from Just the Rican and his comics. He put me up on Chip Sadarsky's Daredevil, and I have been reading it ever since. The story, now we have a new writer on it, but, but I'm I'm checking that out too. So keep up, man. Keep up. All right. So Daredevil issue number 25. I wanted it in the collection, so that's what I did. All right, so we got one more, ladies and gentlemen. You guys want to pop open this big Bertha right here? Let's do it. Let's do it. And like I said before, man, thank you guys for stopping by checking out the channel. If this is your first time hanging out with us, please consider subscribing to the channel. You know, I never claim to be the smartest person or the most knowledgeable. But I can definitely promise you this. I genuinely love collecting comics. <laughs> All right? And I love, I love my comics. I love my comic book community. I love this hobby. And I just like sharing my passion for the hobby with every one of you. You know? So... Definitely. Check me out from time to time. I'm around. Every week, I'll be dropping a comic book preview. That'll be coming out every Tuesday. And I'll be doing a new comic book haul. New, new, comic, book, uh, new comic book day haul every week. Also, 
So don't miss those either. All right. Now that's how this baby came. So just give me a second and we're gonna pull all of that up out of there. All right. Even, yeah, okay. Bingo. Got it. Got it. Let's see. Set that right there. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Before we go, I definitely want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by checking out the channel, man. I enjoyed this little half hour or so, and I definitely feel a lot better. I feel a lot more relaxed. It's just what a brother needed, man, getting off from a hard day's work. Nothing like comics to level you out. <laughs> All right. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So... Here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let me give you a little skinny on why I bought this, right? So, first of all, this character was created by Stan Lee, uh, Roy Thomas, uh, what's his name? Lynn Wine, and John Ramita Sr., right? And this could possibly be the next Sorcerer Supreme. So in Doctor Strange 2, we could probably find out, we may find out, there's a possibility that we could find out who the next Sorcerer Supreme is. And there's a strong possibility that it could be this individual. And I am talking about... Wait for it. Strange Tales, issue 169, Brother Voodoo. Yes, and we have it in a 1.8, which I'm cool with the low grade because you already know, low grade is better than no grade, baby. Let's pull it out the plastic. Right? Yeah. And she's a nice looking copy for, for 1.8. She's nice, man. That cover, that presentation. Like what I like I that curb appeal. She's got curb appeal for 1.8. That's why I bought her. Yep. That's why I purchased her. She's got curb appeal for 1.8. Right? Very nice. Very nice. I think that's awesome. So, I'm excited about what's going on with this comic book, man. I don't know if you guys know it or not, but, you know, it's been a lot of movement with this book over the last few months. It's been a lot of movement. Shout out to the homie over there, Keep It Thorough. My boy, Keep It Thorough. Because I think he and I feel the same way about this book. I heard him mention it. I was thinking and feeling it. And I heard him mention it. And I agree with him. That there's a strong possibility. That the multiverse of uh, madness that's coming. Doctor Strange issue number two. Could tell us a little something. Uh, about the next uh, Sorcerer Supreme. You know what I mean? Published by Marvel. As we all know. Uh, Strange Tales issue number 169. It was it was published in in uh, 1973, right? So 
When we think about Dr. Voodoo, it's a pretty old book, 73. I was born in 71, so this book is just about as old as I am. And and from where I come from, that's pretty old. <laughs> All right? The key factor is it's the first appearance of Brother Voodoo. Uh, last recorded sales on this book um, was in an 8.5, and it was $660. And that's great at CGC, right? The current trend, it's up 6%. Uh, and copies moving on the secondary market is up 6%. And uh, total recorded sales on this one was 1,076 copies that sold over the past few months. Yeah, so it's up 6% 6 and it's moving, man. The average grade itself for this was $757, and that's the fair market value according to uh, CGC Go Collect, right? Um, and also cover price. Um, so the raw copy sell average is going for in, in a good copy to a low grade. You could get for like 200 to 300 bucks. Um, and 300 $75 to $500 for a mid to high grade. Um, and that's that's raw, right? So not bad. A lot of copies moving right now on the secondary market. So I was actually happy that I was able to get this graded in a 1.8, but I didn't have to pay a lot of money for it. But there are a lot of these books that are changing hands right now. So I'm happy to be a part of that because people know that there's something going on with this with this character. Something's going to happen. And guess what? If it doesn't happen... I still got a fire book in my collection that I'm super happy to have, right? Brother Voodoo, awesome, super powerful. One of the, one of the one of the masters of the mystics for sure. And yo, he's 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 got superhuman strength. And yo, he he's got he goes by like many names, like the the uh, the Gunner of Gods. Like yo, this dude is dope. <laughs> this dude is dope. And so I'm just happy to have it in my collection, man. And, and I just wanted to share this with you guys. It's a clean, man. It's very nice looking uh, for 1.8, man. She looks real good, man. And I can't complain about it at all. Looks real good. Here's just a, just a little known fact for it. So, so you know, uh, the highest known graded copies that recently sold, um, uh, 2,000... A 9.4 sold for $2,850 um, a few a few uh, days ago, and that was with 21 bids. That was on December 4th. Uh, a 9.6 sold for $4,400 back in November of 2021. And a 9.8 sold for a mega $21,600, and that was back in May of 2021. So people know that there's something going on with this book, and they started moving, so... If you see it and, you know, if you're a speculator, now's a good time to buy. Strange Tales, issue 169. First appearance of Brother Voodoo, who could possibly be the next Sorcerer Supreme. All right? So let me get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me for a little while. Every now and again, I'll drop videos like this. Very spontaneous. You know, not really uh much planning to it just something to do you know what i mean i wrote down a couple of notes to share with you guys concerning the comic i just thought you might be interested all right so let me go grab something to eat and i'm gonna do my best to relax because guess what tomorrow i gotta do it all over again i appreciate everybody all right i'll see you next video tomorrow's new comic book day you know <laughs> peace